Hi again guys, welcome back to the channel. Today Worf's going to be helping me take some PAR readings with our all new Apogee PAR sensor meter and we're going to be testing the XS2000 and P2000 by Vipar Spectra so you guys can find out the best light height and dimmer setting for your plants in all stages of growth. Let's get into it. I'm super excited guys, we've teamed up with Apogee Instruments and they sent us a new MQ610 PAR meter with the all new EPAR sensor. And it's pretty exciting for us guys because I love the data and this will let us be able to make some new kind of content videos and light reviews. So we'll be able to measure our lights in different tents and give you guys PAR maps and height recommendations along with the dimmer knob settings so you guys can get the best PAR information for the best height and dimmer settings for your plant through various stages of growth. And what's exciting about the Apogee Instruments new MQ610 meter with the all new EPAR sensor is that it's built specifically to measure the new lights that are hitting the market today because more and more lights start to come with chips that in the expanded range passive visible spectrum in the IR and UV. This all new meter with the EPAR sensor allows you to read from 380 nanometers in the UV up to 750 nanometers in the IR range. So that's beyond the visible spectrum. So you can actually start to get accurate par from the new lights hitting the market with expanded wavelength chips. And that's perfect for our lights we're measuring today since the Vipar Spectra XS2000 and P2000 both feature IR chips at 730 nanometers previous PAR meters would not be able to detect that IR of light because it's beyond the visible spectrum. But with the new EPAR sensor, we can capture that data and get an accurate PAR from these lights and lights featuring UV chips as well. Definitely go check out Apogee's YouTube channel, guys. If you're curious, there's a lot of research being done over there on the effects of UV and IR light in photosynthesis in plants. And they're beginning to find a lot of data suggests that the plants are benefiting from IR and UV chips. That's why they're starting to be included in a lot of grow lights. And that's why they made the EPAR sensors so they could accurately capture the data and get measurements with these lights featuring these chips because plants are showing benefits in photosynthesis, growth, and yields with IR and UV. Early research suggests that plants benefit more from chips in the IR range, so that's why the meter goes up to 750 nanometers, and a little bit less in the UV range, that's why it only goes down to 380 nanometers. Let's talk a little bit about the setup and how I'll be measuring these lights. So I used the old 2x4 tent that we started off the channel with, guys, and I taped off one foot section squares in the bottom of the tent. And then I took measurements from the middle of each one foot square section and then three along the center line. I then recorded the data at three different heights of 24 inches, 18 inches, and 14 inches above the canopy at all the main dimmer knob settings, 100%, 75%, 50%, in 25%. I've also recorded the watt draw from the wall for each of these lights at each of the dimmer knob settings. So that means when you guys are looking at these PAR charts, you'll be able to see exactly what the dimmer knob should be and the watt draw along with the height to get that appropriate PAR. So if you have a cheap watt meter off Amazon, I've linked the one I use down below in the description if you guys are interested. You don't need the PAR meter to get the accurate results. You can just dial your light to that watts and that height and that's the PAR you'll be getting on your canopy. That'll answer all the questions that we get about what light height should it be? What dimming knob setting should I have it on? For what stage? So this literally will answer all those questions when you look at the PAR chart, if you're running these lights. But we'll definitely be doing more videos, guys, on our XS4000 and P4000 with similar setups so you guys can get a good idea on height, watt, and output for those lights and other lights we review in the future. So if you guys have a light you want us to check out, definitely comment down below and we'll see if we can get our hands on one and do a similar type video so you guys can have the information to help you throughout your grow. Without further ado, let's take a look at the XS2000 and how it performed in the two x four. Taking a look at the chart here in the top right, you can see the key with the dimmer slash watt position. Uh, so we cover 100%, 75%, 50 and 25% in the dimmer knob along with the actual watt draw measured by a meter at the wall for the XS2000. Below that you can see a stage slash par key that shows you the approximate par you should have for what stage your plant is in, either seedling, veg, or bloom. And then looking at the main tent, that represents a full 2x4 tent with a single light hung in the middle. So if you have a 2x2 two two or a 3x3, three three, you'd want to be looking more at the center of the chart. Whereas if you have a full 2x4 and you plan on using one of these single lights in there, you can get an accurate map for the whole tent with a single light. 
So if you're running an XS2000 in a 2x4, 2x2, or 3x3, this is gonna give you some great info on how much par you're gonna be putting down at what dimmer position. So all you would need is a really cheap watt meter and match the watts shown on this chart and the hang height, and it's gonna give you that equivalent par within your tent. So for example, if you had a 2x4 with the XS2000 full of seedlings and you wanted to know the best dimmer position, you would probably want to select 50% at 24 inches height and 88 watts on your watt meter would give you a great par coverage for the entire tent for plants and seedling. Or if you're in veg, you'd probably want to turn it up to 75%, 165 watts on your meter, and that would provide great coverage for all the plants in veg stage inside your 2x4, 2x2, or 3x3. One thing that's good to know is in those smaller tents, 2x2, 3x3, these par numbers might spike slightly due to the walls and the reflection being moved in tighter in a closed area. So that can make the numbers increase. So always read your plants, judge what they're telling you and adjust from there. But these should be some great starting values for you. Take a look at the entire chart where you can see 24 inches, 18 inches, and 14 inches above canopy and the corresponding dimmer switch setting and watt draw from the wall. This should give you guys some great information for whatever stage your plants are in and what position and dimmer knob setting the light should be at. And looking at the chart, you can get some useful information depending on how you grow. Let's say you were growing autos in a two x four with a single XS2000. At 18 inches and 100%, you could flower two autos in the middle of that tent while having two vegging on the left or right side and they would be perfectly fine out in that zone because the par's not high enough to hurt them. Or if you were growing photos in a two x four and you were wondering what's the proper height to bloom out the whole tent and provide even coverage, you could probably see by looking at this chart that you would want at least two XS2000s to be able to provide even par coverage for plants in bloom. Or if you're running a two x two and three x three, you can see that this single light will provide more than enough coverage for any stage of your plant within the whole tent. And here's the results for the same setup with the Vipar Spectra P2000. So those of you running a P2000, take a look at these numbers. These should help you get some ideas on height and dimmer setting along with the wattage in the top corner there, because the P2000 does use a lower power driver that maxes out at 200 watts. I measured 209 with mine at 100%. Um, this is going to give you guys some great information on height and dimmer knob setting for whatever stage your flowers are in. Leave some comments below, guys. Let us know what you think. Let us know what lights you'd like to see tested in the future and if you thought this was useful at all or not. Be sure to check out our YouTube channel members for all kinds of cool behind the scenes content and also on Instagram where I'm going to post these individually charts. So if you guys want to check them out there too, follow us on Instagram for the behind the scenes and all the fun stuff. Join the channel members to help support our content and what we do here. We'll see you guys in the next one.